Hi, welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss about the most important questions in hip complex biomechanics. Hip complex is also unfortunately a large chapter and you need to specify or you need to stick on to the most important things when you are preparing for the examinations. And of course we'll discuss this session with uh, uh, the usual method of uh, discussing the long essay then about the short essay and about the short answer questions and of course if there is some difficult question we will discuss more into it and how can we write it so that uh, we get the best marks out of this so let us explore into the hip complex biomechanics <music> In hip complex, if we start with the long essay question, of course, if you have watched the video on knee complex, you would have seen that there was a question like a mobility and stability of the knee joint. And that question was quite different from any other long essay questions that we would see otherwise. So uh, if you are someone who is watching this video for the first time, this series of video study with me videos for the first time, I would kindly request you to uh, watch the video on the knee complex biomechanics and come to this one so that uh, you can uh, uh, get familiarized with the situation more easily, right? So the first one is the what is our define the mobility and stability components of the hip joint and write a note on the structure of the hip joint. So definitely this is an essay question you need to start with the introduction so it will give a beautiful introduction about the hip complex a brief introduction about the hip complex you just have one joint so you need not worry about whether it is a uh, whether it is like a tibiofemoral or patrofemoral just you can stick on to that um, and give a small introduction then look the question underlie it what is that it is defining mobility and stability component. It's defining mobility and stability component. So what are the components of stability? I told you earlier, it's a, what are the components of stability? The components of stability of a joint are the bones, the ligaments and the muscles or bones, ligaments, muscles as well as the passive elements in between the joint or in the joint. So if you look at here, we have the acetabulum as well as we have the head of the femur. So you have to explain about the peculiarity of the acetabulum, the concave shape of the fossa. You have to explain more into the hip bone, the ilium ischium contribution to the uh, acetabulum you have to explain. Then you have to explain as I told you about the acetabular fossa, acetabular nodes, etc. Then you have to explain the transverse acetabular ligament and you have to explain how this concave shape is contributing to the joint stability you know that uh, it's a bottom socket type of joint and of course uh, uh, due to this concave shape there is a relative a great relative amount of greater stability than any other plane joint of course right you know that so uh, here you have to mention the concave shape of the acetabulum uh, is contributing to the stability and then you move on to head of femur, femur, how it has been cow shaped, write about the phobia, write about uh, different aspects of the head of the femur and how is it articulating well into the acetabular fossa, how far it has been covered, etc. If you are uh, well good with the topic, you can write about some clinical conditions or some alterations in uh, like acetabular dysplasia, etc. Where the head of the femur uh, or the articulation can be what you call uh, damaged or, or reduced or there can be less uh, congruence in the articulation. Just mention that in one or two lines. That would be nice. Right. Yes. And then you have to mention about the labrum acetabular labrum, the role of the labrum, how it's contributing to the stability, you know that, then the ligaments. The ligaments of the hip complex is also very important, not like ACL, PCL, they may not ask you uh, one single ligament uh, in specific, but they can ask you the broad question known as the ligaments of the hip complex, which we'll discuss later. So you have to write about the ligament, how the ligament is contributing to the stability. As I told you earlier, remember, do not write just the anatomy of the ligament and think that you will get marks in this essay. 
in how to write how it is contributing to stability so specifying how each ligament is providing stability to the range of motion or to the joint what is the role of that ligament some may be providing androposterior stability some may be providing mediolateral stability how to specify that don't forget to mention the wide ligament okay and then we have the capsular ligamentous tension or capsular ligamentous uh, balance in the hip joint. That's a very small portion. Uh, if any, if you skip it, there is no problem. Right? Then there is a trabecular system. You know that trabecular system is uniquely uh, developed in the hip complex and how it is being developed, what are the different type of trabecular system and how they withstand the force. How trabecular is contributing to stability? Because trabecular system helps in withstanding greater amount of compression and tensile loads. So it will contribute to overall joint stability. So you have to mention that. And then finally the muscles. Of course the hip flexors, hip extensors, media rotators, that is the adductor compartment muscle and lateral compartment muscle or lateral rotators. How to mention the muscles? If possible, write the origin of insertion. Even if not, uh, even if you don't remember the origin of mention, origin and insertion, you can write, uh, just write hip flexors, the iliosovasus, fractus femoris. You can write down the names of that muscle, and then write down the simply, you know, I can write down the role of that muscle, how it is providing stability to the joint. Right? That would be sufficient. And then the next aspect or the second portion of this chapter, this essay is a mobility component. There you have to move on to what are the levels of mobility. There, the first thing, femur or motion of a femur on a cerebellum. When femur is moving on a cerebellum, it's a convex, concave shaped, moving on the convex, uh, it's a convex shaped, moving on a concave shaped acetabulum. You have to write with respect to the concave convex rule. We have discussed in chapter uh, during our hip complex discussion. If you have any doubt, just check on to that. Then you have to write the motion of pelvis on the femur. The, what are the motions of pelvis on femur? The motion of pelvis on the femur are the anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, and the lateral shift, lateral tilt, and posterior rotation. I have to write on that in a beautiful manner. Remember the equal weightage and uh, give stress to that both. If possible, write about the coordinated movement. We can wind up uh, or you can uh, sum up that discussion. At the end, try to give a very small conclusion about the same thing. And if possible, uh, if you are good enough, uh, when, uh, kindly mention the pelvic femoral breather also. That's fine. Second one would be to calculate the force transmission in unilateral stance with cane ipsilaterally and laterally and also sometimes they can ask like uh, with the trunk lateral lean and in the bracket they might give you the calculation things you don't have to buy hard the uh, force components like it's an 875 newton or like the example that i give you it's a 100 newton body weight is acting the uh, 5 by 6 uh, you have to just remember the formula 2 by 3rd of the body weight 5 by 3rd of the body weight but you don't have to remember the values because they will give you value you don't have to uh, remember the momentum of the force etc Okay. So most probably they will give you value and this question is less likely to be asked. Uh, usually uh, um, mathematics is not being stretched in our syllabus. Uh, so they may not ask you this one. Uh, uh, even if they ask you, they will give you the, all the calculations. So you have to prepare with that. Uh, just prepare with one or two examples. No need to buy hard the things. Almost the things are same regardless of the situation. There is no applied questions like uh, the momenta may not uh, and become something else. Okay. Most probably it will be the same value. So if you practice with the value in your textbook or if you practice with the value in the minor uh, lecture, it will be very fine. And it's been less likely to be asked, but still you can prepare it. Uh, if this question is not answered with the calculation, if it is asked with the calculation and you have to write calculation, definitely the values will be given in the bracket or within the question itself. If it's not given, you have to write, just write the how it has been in the unilateral stance, how it has been in the cane, uh, how uh, what are the benefits of uh, using cane ipsilaterally, contralaterally, etc. If possible, explain with the calculations, but uh, uh, I don't think so that without uh, uh, keeping in the calculation values or uh, figures in uh, uh, bracket, they won't they may not ask you to write the calculation. So you don't have to uh, stress on this question much you have to stress on the other question right then the short essays first one here is the ligaments of the hip complex i told you the ligaments of the hip complex are vast and they can ask you for 10 marks question right or it can be an eight mark question 
trabecular system is again 8 or 10 mark question do not think that you will get good marks without writing the trabecular system with diagrams so very important to write down the diagrams and the orientation of the trabecular system is very important we have to write about the medial compressive lateral trabecular lateral tensile trabecular system and all that important points that are seen in the trabecular system and can you guess the another important question it will be coxa valga and vara definitely coxa valga and vara either they can ask you in short essays or they can uh, pinpoint it to be specific in the short answers three marks question if they are asking like a coxa explain coxa valga and vara or explain coxa valga and its biomechanical implications how to write everything in detail and we have given everything or we have discussed everything in detail in the channel too pelvic tilt very important you cannot uh, move on with the hip complex without studying pelvic tilt and don't just learn pelvic tilt for your exam because it is a fundamental concept in basic bi biomechanical discussion and throughout your physical career. So you have to remember and uh, study well about the pelvic tilt, anterior, posterior, lateral shift, etc. Okay, be thorough with that. If possible, draw some diagrams. Some diagrams are tough to draw, but still you can draw the uh, figure representative diagram, fit body diagrams you can draw. So the questions once again I will tell you ligaments with hip complex, trabecular system, coxa valga or coxa valga or comparing both then the pelvic tails this can be the questions that can be asked in short essay. And then moving into short answer question uh, to be specific or uh, starting with a difficult one they can ask like a center edge angle okay uh, less likely but still they can ask you center edge angle we have discussed it in a unique video then the uh, acetabular displacement etc less likely to ask that one more likely to ask angle of inclination angle of torsion the anti-version withdrawal concepts okay angle of inclination coxavarga can be mixed or uh, then the angle of torsion and uh, anti-version retroversion concept can be also asked so Study with the diagram when you're drawing or uh, explaining angle of inclination or angle of torsion or any other angle in biomechanics. Remember to uh, draw some diagrams because explaining angles without uh, uh, diagrams in just words may not fetch you good marks, right? Yes. In muscles, only lateral rotators of the hips are uh, commonly seen as lateral rotator muscles of the hip because they are a bit more specific to answer and uh, shorter also. So, Large rotators of hip uh, fetches good marks. Then pelvic tilt again, as I told you, three marks question. They can ask you like anterior pelvic tilt, three marks question. It would be a general question. They will not ask you the biomechanical implications or more detailing to that, just with that uh, pelvic tilt. And acetabulum, I have seen them asking uh, in some question papers in some other states. In the acetabulum, is asked about the peculiarity, how it is being contributed by ilium ischium pupils, and what are the uh, role played by in uh, stability and mobility, right? Okay, so once again, let me tell you the center edge angle, angle of inclination, angle of torsion, antiversion, retroversion, of course, coming in that, lateral rotators of the hip, any pelvic tilt movement, acetabulum, and even if there's some concept like acetabular dysplasia, etc. Not like the concept like a slip to capital femoral abscess, let me not ask you that. Uh, um, so two specific questions. So with that, I wind up the session on the hip complex and we'll see this series uh, with yet another video on uh, most probably the angle complex in coming videos or uh, coming days. And uh, until then, stay tuned. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to the channel.